here and we are here to discuss about what is the basis of free will, how the free will is being created. That is something which is a very interesting question because it took me years to understand what free will is and how can we exercise that free will? How can we not create a karma, you know, not accumulate negative karmas in our lives or in our cycles? So I'm going to share that knowledge with you so that you also get a little bit of clarity <clears throat> as far as the karma is concerned. So we all think that karma is about action and uh, we always feel that if we act out of charity, if we are doing certain acts of charity, that is going to accumulate good karma. It will earn something good. So let me tell you, friends, it's not about charity. It's about something. There is something subtler that is right now working, which is called the free will. And free will is the power which is given to us by the universe to use our will properly. And when we talk about free will, it's just not one word. Free will is loaded with other things, especially the intention. The intention is the most important determinant of the volition that we always use. Please understand this. Intention is very important determinant as far as our free will is concerned. Even if we are exercising our free will, it is very important that intention has to be seen that what sort of intention do you have behind every action? For example, um, I'll give you a very simple example. Um, suppose um, if you say something to somebody that is completely prompted by love, you do not have any bad intention and you said something because you were doing it because you love that person and you want that person to come out of a situation and you say something and that the person feels hurt. Then the karma that is being accrued is not the karma that you will accrue. There will be no negative karma as far as you are concerned because your intentions are completely pure. You did not want to uh, you know, distress anybody or you did not want to disturb anybody, but you were helping that person. Secondly, the another aspect is suppose if you're saying something out of hatred or animosity to somebody and the other person who is listening to you does not take it in the sense, does not receive that hatred does not think that it is uh, said in a uh, you know hateful manner or with bitterness then the karma that is being accrued will be on your part you will be taking that karma you will be accumulating bad or negative karma rather than that person because that person has not accepted your hatred or bitterness at all the person feels that it is your love but because it is coming from you with a lot of hate, with a lot of jealousy, with a lot of envy, with a lot of other negative emotion, then you are the person who is going to accrue a lot of negative karma. I will again um, give you a very uh, a, a sweet example in the form of a story because that story is etched here in my heart and uh, I always... Uh, tell people this story whenever I'm describing uh, in detail about the karma. So this is a story that was being, um, uh, you know, uh, told by Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa. And Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa always used to uh, talk to his followers and the students whenever they used to be there. So uh, there was one time he was just sitting and uh, he was telling the followers about uh, you know, what karma is. So he was describing a, a beautiful example. So he said that there were two friends and those two friends used to go to the brothel house every Saturday. And uh, every Saturday, they used to go and entertain themselves by being with one woman. So there was a day, again, the Saturday came, these two women were again going to the brothel house to uh, entertain themselves. So what happened was in the midway, the friends, they saw that uh, there is a, a kind of, uh, you can say, 
lecture hall whereby a big brochure of uh, bhagavad gita was there uh, which is our indian scripture a uh, uh, beautiful indian scripture uh, so it was there and it was written that there is a uh, spiritual talk on bhagavad gita and that is going to happen now one of the friends he just started thinking that okay if i go and uh, sit in the lecture hall i'll be one notch up from my friend because uh, i will be able to secure a place in heaven for myself and this was the thought that prompted him not to go to the brothel house but to be in the lecture hall so he goes and sits in the lecture hall and the second friend continues his journey towards the brothel house now what is happening to friend a who is in the lecture hall he is just thinking he is just thinking and he is rigging his mind and he is just thinking about his friend who is there with that lady and he is just thinking oh my god he must be having the time of his life he must be enjoying his life so there is a feeling of jealousy and envy also there was always already a feeling of manipulation in him when he started manipulating when he said that okay i am going to the lecture hall because why because he wanted to have one seat in heaven so all already there was a manipulation because he wanted there was a lot of comparison and competition in him it was already there second thing he did was jealousy and envy when he started uh, you know uh, thinking about that that person might be enjoying so much and then most of the time he was rather than understanding and being in the lecture hall he was not doing anything but just thinking about his friend on the other hand the second friend of his what did he do you know when he reached there he was full of admiration and appreciation towards his friend why because he thought oh my god my friend is great soul because he chose the spiritual path than the carnal pleasures he did not give in to the carnal pleasures today and he actually made certain amends in his life and now he is growing spiritually so the b the friend b who was there with that lady he just kept thinking and he just kept thinking about his own limitations that oh my god there are so many limitations there inside of me and i have to work on my limitations now friends shri ramakrishna paramahansa says at that time that who is going to accrue more karma the friend a who was there in the lecture hall and listening to that spiritual talk of bhagavad gita or the b who was there in the brothel house with that lady so when we ask anyone everybody will be like oh my god the person who was in the brothel house obviously because he was doing something that uh, is not ex- uh, expected out of him but no friends this is a paradox this is irony here that the a friend the a person who is in the spiritual hall he is the one who's going to accumulate more karma than the friend b because what happened was whatever he did whatever he did at that time even if his own decision of sitting in the hall was actually backed by an ulterior motive he had a motive behind that and that motive was very very negative be it jealousy be it envy be it competition be it comparison be it anything that was there so the person who thought that he is going to accrue good karma he is going to be in the good books of god he is the one who ends up accruing lot of negative karma as compared to the b friend you know why why does b not accrue the karma because he could understand his own limitations and he accepts those limitations and then it becomes a doorway for him to actually work on himself it actually opens that door for that spiritual growth for that spiritual awareness for which the soul is always seeking for so he becomes the seeker and then he does not accrue any karma 
So this is what the volition is. This is what a free will is. Both of them exercised their free will. Both of them exercised their own choices. But each and every choice was backed by a, a you know, intention. And according to that intention, the karma waste was being created. The cycle was created. That wheel of karma started spinning. So this is, my friend, how karma actually penetrates into our lives, everyday life. And unless and until we are conscious of our choices, I'm again and again repeating this, unless and until we are conscious of our own choices that we are making, we'll keep creating karmas every second of our lives. And that is something we don't want it to do, I think. I hope, I hope, I don't know whether I uh, made everything clear, but I hope I gave you a lot of clarity as far as the volition or the free will is concerned.